What if we told you that one of the boldest, most outrageous moves in automotive history wasn't made by a giant like Ferrari or Ford, but by a scrappy underdog from Japan? A company so determined to stand out, it bet its entire future on an engine so strange, so misunderstood, that the rest of the world had already written it off as a failure. In the 1960s, Mazda went all in on a weird spinning design, an appetite for fuel, and a sound like nothing else on the road. This isn't just a story of engineering. It's a story of rebellion, of a company that risked it all to keep a bizarre spinning triangle alive. The year is 1959, and Mazda is barely surviving. Japan's economy is booming, but Mazda, then known as Toyo Kogio, is just another small fish in a rapidly expanding pond filled with automotive giants. Toyota and Nissan were already dominating the domestic market, while Honda was quickly establishing itself as a motorcycle king. But Mazda's president, Sanusi Matsuda, had a serious problem. The Japanese government was about to enforce the People's Car Policy, a consolidation plan designed to strengthen Japan's auto industry by eliminating smaller players. The message was clear, innovate or evaporate. But what technology could possibly set Mazda apart? The answer came from the most unlikely place, Nazi Germany. In 1954, a German engineer named Felix Wankel had developed a revolutionary new type of internal combustion engine. Instead of pistons moving up and down, Wankel's engine used triangular rotors spinning inside an oval chamber. The design was elegant in its simplicity, Fewer moving parts, smoother operation, higher RPMs, and a significantly better power-to-weight ratio than conventional piston engines. But there was a catch. Nobody could make it work reliably. By 1961, every major automaker had licensed Wankel's technology, eager to be part of what seemed like the future of automotive propulsion. But one by one, they all abandoned it. Mercedes-Benz, Rolls-Royce, Ford, and GM all gave up, citing excessive fuel consumption, poor emissions, and catastrophic seal failures. In 1963, with nothing to lose and everything to gain, Matsuda sent a team of engineers to Germany to secure a licensing agreement for the rotary engine. The lead engineer on this mission was Kenichi Yamamoto, who would later confess, when I first saw the rotary engine in operation, I thought it was impossible. There were so many fundamental problems. But Yamamoto saw something else too, an opportunity for Mazda to differentiate itself and escape the government's consolidation plans. When his team returned to Japan, they faced an almost impossible task. Make this problematic engine work reliably in a production car before the company ran out of money. Here's where things get interesting. What makes a rotary engine so different from the conventional piston engine sitting under the hood of almost every car on the road? In a traditional engine, pistons move up and down, turning linear motion into rotational force through a crankshaft. It's complex, with hundreds of parts all trying to change direction thousands of times per minute. But the rotary? Picture a triangle spinning inside an oval housing. As it rotates, it creates three separate chambers that expand and contract, creating the four stages of internal combustion. Intake, compression, combustion, and exhaust all in one continuous motion. The result is an engine that's smaller, lighter, and capable of spinning at mind-boggling speeds, up to 9,000 RPM in production cars, and even higher in racing applications. But why couldn't anyone make it work? The main challenge was the apex seals, thin strips of metal at the corners of the rotor that maintain compression inside the chamber. These seals wear quickly and, when they fail, the engine loses compression and stops working. Then there was the fuel consumption. Early rotary engines were notoriously thirsty, sometimes getting half the fuel economy of comparable piston engines. And let's not forget about emissions. The unique combustion chamber shape led to incomplete burning of fuel, resulting in higher hydrocarbon emissions. Yamamoto assembled a team of Mazda's brightest engineers and gave them a name that reflected their desperate mission, the 47 Ronin after the legendary masterless samurai who dedicated their lives to avenging their lord. Working around the clock, these engineers tackled each problem methodically. For the apex seals, 
They experimented with dozens of materials before developing a carbon-aluminum blend that offered the right combination of durability and friction characteristics. For fuel economy, they redesigned the combustion chamber and improved the fuel delivery system. For emissions, they developed thermal reactors that would help complete the combustion process. In 1967, after countless failed attempts, endless prototypes, and more than a few moments when the entire project seemed doomed, Mazda unveiled the Cosmos Sport 110S, the world's first two-rotor production car. What made this achievement even more remarkable was that Mazda had succeeded where automotive giants with vastly more resources had failed. The little company from Hiroshima had done the impossible, but this was just the beginning of Mazda's rotary revolution. With the Cosmo proving that a rotary-powered production car was viable, Mazda began expanding its rotary lineup. But it wasn't until the introduction of the RX-3 in 1971 that the world really took notice. The RX-3 was a compact sports coupe with aggressive styling and a 110-horsepower 12A rotary engine that could propel it from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just over 9 seconds. Impressive for an affordable sports car of that era. But what really put the RX-3 on the map was racing. In 1972, an RX-3 shocked the automotive world by defeating the previously dominant Nissan Skyline GTR at the Fuji Grand Prix in Japan. The little rotary-powered Mazda outran a car that had won 49 consecutive races. Think about that for a second. A company that was nearly dissolved by government mandate just a decade earlier was now beating established performance brands on the racetrack. This victory wasn't just a win for Mazda, it was vindication of the rotary engine itself. The RX-3's success helped Mazda weather another crisis, the 1973 oil crisis. While the rotary's thirst for fuel became a liability during this period, its performance credentials and uniqueness kept sales steady enough for the company to survive. But the best was yet to come. In 1978, Mazda unveiled what would become the definitive rotary-powered sports car, the RX-7. The first-generation RX-7, known as the FB, was a revelation. Its sleek, lightweight design and perfectly balanced chassis made it an instant hit with enthusiasts and critics alike. Car & Driver magazine called it a sports car of the future that you can buy today. With its 100-horsepower 12A rotary engine mounted behind the front axle for ideal weight distribution, the RX-7 could hit 60 miles per hour in 9.2 seconds and reach a top speed of 125 miles per hour, all while selling for thousands less than comparable sports cars from Europe. The RX-7's success was staggering. In its first year, Mazda sold over 70,000 units, making it the best-selling rotary-powered car in history. By the end of the first generation's run in 1985, more than 470,000 FB RX-7s had been sold worldwide. But Mazda wasn't content to rest on its laurels. The rotary engine was about to enter its most sophisticated, and some would say most glorious, era. When the second generation RX-7, known as the FC, debuted in 1985, it represented a complete reinvention. Gone was the lightweight simplicity of the original, In its place was a more sophisticated, technologically laden sports car, clearly aimed at competing with the best from Germany and Italy. The FC introduced the world to the 13B rotary engine, a larger, more powerful evolution of Mazda's rotary design. But the real game changer came in 1987 with the introduction of the 13B DEI Turbo 2 engine. This turbocharged rotary produced 182 horsepower in a car that weighed just 2,700 pounds, a power to weight ratio that could embarrass many exotics of the era. The FC Turbo could sprint to 60 miles per hour in just 6.8 seconds and had a top speed of over 140 miles per hour. Car magazines were stunned. Here was a Japanese sports car offering Porsche level performance for Toyota Supra money. But even the FC would be overshadowed by what came next. In 1992, Mazda unleashed what many consider the greatest rotary powered car ever built. The third generation RX-7 codenamed FD. The FD RX-7 was automotive art. Its curvaceous body, penned by designer Wu Huang Chin, remains one of the most beautiful automotive designs of the 1990s. But it wasn't just a pretty face. 
Under the hood was the 13B REW, a twin sequential turbocharged rotary engine producing 255 horsepower in US spec and up to 280 in Japan. This revolutionary twin turbo system used a similar primary turbo for low end response and a larger secondary turbo that kicked in at higher RPMs for maximum power. The results were extraordinary. The FD could reach 60 miles per hour in just 5.1 seconds and complete the quarter mile in 13.6 seconds, numbers that put it in direct competition with the Acura NSX and Porsche 911 Turbo. But what made the FD truly special was how it delivered that performance. The smoothness of the rotary engine combined with the perfect 50-50 weight distribution created a driving experience unlike anything else on the road. Jeremy Clarkson famously described it as one of the best cars I've ever driven and praised its handling as telepathic. The FD RX-7 was the pinnacle of rotary development for road cars. It showed just how far Mazda had taken Felix Wankel's troubled design. From an engineering curiosity deemed too problematic for production, the rotary has evolved into the heart of one of the finest sports cars of its generation. But while the FD was conquering the streets, Mazda was about to make rotary history on the world's most grueling racetrack. June 23, 1991, the 24 hours of Le Mans, the most prestigious endurance race in the world. For 23 hours, the screaming four-rotor Mazda 787B had been chasing the seemingly untouchable Mercedes and Jaguar prototypes. Its distinctive banshee wail, a sound unlike any other race car, echoed through the French countryside as it circulated the eight and a half mile Circuit de la Sade. Against all odds, the little Japanese company's rotary powered prototype had outlasted its more powerful competitors. One by one, the favorites dropped out with mechanical issues or accidents. In the final hour, the orange and green 787B, driven by Johnny Herbert, Volker Wielder, and Bertrand Gachat, took the lead. When Herbert crossed the finish line after 24 grueling hours, Mazda made history. It was the first Japanese manufacturer to win Le Mans and the only car to ever win with a non-piston engine. The winning 787B's R26B engine was a masterpiece of rotary engineering, a naturally aspirated four-rotor design producing over 700 horsepower at a mind-boggling 9,000 RPM while maintaining reliability for 24 straight hours of racing. To put this achievement in perspective, Mazda, a company that was nearly dissolved three decades earlier, had beaten Mercedes-Benz, Jaguar, Porsche, and every other automotive giant at one of the most demanding races in motorsport. And they did it with an engine design that the rest of the industry had written off as impractical. The Le Mans victory was the ultimate vindication of Mazda's rotary gamble. It proved that with enough engineering determination, the rotary engine could not only compete, but triumph at the highest levels of motorsport. Despite its racing success and the iconic status of the RX-7, Mazda's rotary program faced growing challenges as the 1990s progressed. Increasingly strict emissions regulations around the world posed a fundamental problem for the rotary engine. Its inherent design created higher hydrocarbon emissions than comparable piston engines, and its fuel efficiency lagged far behind the competition. As the automotive industry began focusing more on efficiency and environmental impact, the rotary's weakness became harder to ignore. By the late 1990s, these challenges, combined with Japan's economic recession, forced Mazda to make a difficult decision. In 2002, the FD RX-7 went out of production with no immediate successor planned. For the first time since 1967, it seemed the rotary engine might disappear from production cars entirely. But Mazda wasn't ready to give up on its signature technology just yet. In 2003, after a brief hiatus, the rotary engine returned in an all-new sports car, the RX-8. Unlike its predecessors, the RX-8 was designed to be more practical and accessible. It featured a unique freestyle door design with rear hinged back doors providing easy access to functional rear seats, something no RX-7 ever offered. Under the hood was the newly developed Renesis rotary engine. This naturally aspirated 13B MSP produced 238 horsepower 
and could rev to an incredible 9,000 RPM. What made Renesis special was its side exhaust ports, which improved emissions and fuel efficiency compared to earlier rotary designs. The RX-8 was an engineering marvel. It received numerous awards, including the 2003 International Engine of the Year. Its perfect 50-50 weight distribution and responsive handling made it a favorite among driving enthusiasts. Road & Track magazine declared, the RX-8 combines sports car dynamics with everyday practicality in a way few cars can match. But despite these accolades, the RX-8 faced an uphill battle. Rising fuel prices made its relatively poor fuel economy, 18 miles per gallon combined, a hard sell, and persistent reliability concerns, particularly regarding apex seal durability, hurt its reputation. As emissions regulations continue to tighten globally, Mazda struggled to make the rotary clean enough to meet standards in key markets. In 2011, the RX-8 was withdrawn from Europe because it couldn't meet Euro 5 emission standards. By 2012, production of the RX-8 ended, and with it, the continuous production of rotary-powered cars that had lasted for 45 years. Many believed this was finally the end of Mazda's rotary experiment, but the company had other ideas. Despite the end of regular production, Mazda never fully abandoned the rotary engine. Engineers continued refining the design, looking for ways to address its fundamental challenges. In 2015, Mazda unveiled the stunning RX Vision concept car. A sleek front engine, rear wheel drive sports coupe, clearly inspired by the spirit of the RX-7. The company announced it was working on a new generation of rotary engine called Sky Active R, though details remain scarce. Then, in an interesting twist, Mazda found a new role for the rotary engine that played to its strengths while minimizing its weaknesses. In 2022, Mazda announced the return of the rotary engine, not as the primary source for a sports car, but as a range extender for electric vehicles. The MX-30 e Skyactiv REV uses a small rotary engine that acts as a generator to charge the battery, allowing the vehicle to operate primarily on electric power while eliminating the range anxiety associated with pure EVs. This application is actually ideal for the rotary engine. Its compact size, smooth operation, and ability to run at a constant, optimal RPM address many of its traditional downsides while taking advantage of its strengths. But what about a true successor to the RX-7 and RX-8? Rumors persist that Mazda hasn't given up on developing a new rotary-powered sports car. Though nothing has been confirmed, regardless of what the future holds, the impact of Mazda's rotary program on automotive history is undeniable. The story of Mazda's rotary engine is one of the greatest tales of persistence in automotive history. When Felix Wankel first demonstrated his strange spinning engine, few could have imagined that a small Japanese company would be the one to perfect it, or that this unique technology would become so intertwined with the company's identity. For over 50 years, through oil crises, tightening regulations, and changing market demands, Mazda has kept the rotary flame alive when every other manufacturer abandoned it. The rotary engine gave Mazda its identity. It transformed the company from an obscure manufacturer facing extinction to a global brand known for innovation and performance. Without it, there might be no Mazda as we know it today. More than just a different way to make power, the rotary engine represents the spirit of Mazda itself, a willingness to challenge convention, to find different solutions to common problems, and to persevere when others might give up. From the Cosmo to the RX-7, from Le Mans Victory to the modern MX-30, the rotary engine has defined Mazda's journey. It's a legacy built on engineering equivalent of defiance, a refusal to accept that something can't be done simply because everyone else has failed. As enthusiasts, we should be grateful that at least one company had the courage to be different. In an industry increasingly dominated by uniformity, Mazda's rotary adventure reminds us that the greatest innovations often come from those willing to take the biggest risks. The next time you hear the distinctive buzz of a rotary engine, remember that you're not just listening to an alternative internal combustion design. You're hearing the sound of automotive defiance.